Welcome to Take a Wonder with Shebs with your host Shebs from Shebs the Wanderer. Now, today my guest is Janine Barone. Now, Janine is a journalist uh, in the world of travel, but she is also a photographer. She is a fashion designer. Uh, she also writes movie screenplays. You will see during our talk, Janine spoke to me about her life up to now and what it takes to achieve what she has accomplished in her career. And here are some of the examples of Janine's work as they range from painting, photography, fashion and product design. So let's take a look into what Janine had to say. Hi, Janine. How are you? You're right. Great. Thanks for um, taking the time to interview me. I appreciate it. No, thank you very much for coming on and um, speaking to me. I know you've got a busy schedule, so I appreciate your time. How did you get into the world of travel? Kind of in a very um, circuitous manner. I'm, I'm trained as a scientist. I always wanted to be um, a cardiologist and I didn't get into medical school, but um, I have a double master's in nutrition and exercise physiology. So I'm a hardcore scientist, but I've always loved the idea of traveling because I come from a very dysfunctional home where we never went anywhere. We didn't even go to the beach, nowhere. And in my heart, I wanted to see the whole world. And I waited, I had to wait until I left the house when I went to college. And that was it. Once I went to Columbia Barnard, uh, the all women's school of Columbia University, uh, every break I traveled and um, I just fell in love. I love nature and just talking to people, talking to strangers, finding out how they live, what they do, their, their foods, everything. And so um, even though I was trained as a scientist and I wrote scientific uh, articles, I also wrote fiction on the side and I just ended up combining it. The people I, uh, publications I wrote, uh, healthcare articles for, I then wrote uh, about bicycling in Southern France, hiking the Dolomite Mountains, because I'm very active, very healthy, I'm a vegetarian, so I combined everything. Interesting, because a lot of people I've spoken to, the transformative sort of travel started from an early age, because you said that you didn't go anywhere or didn't even go to the beach um, at, at a young age. So what, what I've got from that was you really looked into it and thought, you know what, let, let, let's go and um, explore as much as I can. But I know you said your, your major was in science um, and obviously you said you write in publications. I guess this is where your career comes into it because you're a travel, well, journalist, writer, uh, you talk about food, wine, art, there's quite a lot. So, um, how do you sort of balance it all out then? Well, when you were saying, uh, you know, many people you've spoken with um, started out at a young age. What my life in my home for, with, with my dysfunctional family for 18 years was like a prison. And yet I had a very curious mind, very curious. That curiosity led me to Barnard to have a double major and a double minor. I, that curiosity uh, is what a scientist needs, but it's also what a journalist needs. Many people are not curious. Um, one of the reasons we may be in the political situation we're in now, they don't question. I always questioned everything. I knew the home that I lived in was not normal. So I developed um, a creativity through my painting, which I did as a very uh, young person. Uh, photography, which I also did, and nature, which I craved, but I did not travel. Um, but nature is what I find when I travel. That's what I gravitate to, as well as other creative venues. Because I'm a fashion designer um, and a filmmaker, I gravitate to um, whether villages or uh, towns or cities, to, to people who are makers, they're building things, they're designing things, they're, they're making um, uh, dresses or ceramic ware. So all of my background comes together. A lot of people, when they hear about all the things that I do, I write children's books, et cetera, they're saying, 
I don't get it. What do you really do? I do all of it. And I do all of it very well because it's all related to one thing. It's all related to being creative and curious. So that, that's the tie-in. You know, I mean, it's awesome that you've got a variety um, in your sort of portfolio. Um, it's, I mean, you talked about your early age as well, you know, dysfunctional. And it's quite nice that you're actually quite open. There's, there's loads of people who go through, you know, tough times in life, but don't, aren't as open. And I have spoken to a few people who have come on my show and spoken to me about certain things, very, very um, important subjects. But uh, I don't want to go too personal, but in terms of... I know you said oh, it's well, okay. You, you can be personal. I, my life is an open book. Well, w with your travel then, do you have trust in people? when you travel or do oh, you work? I love people. No, see, see, um, when I grew up in my dysfunctional home, there was myself and my brother. I knew this isn't normal. My mother, she's crazy. And I was young, but I figured it out. And so I was technically on my own, psychologically and physically. I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a scientist. I wanted to do cool things. I wanted to create. My brother, on the other hand, he thought we deserved what we got. And basically, he didn't fare very well, and, and we're all estranged. So I love meeting people. What happened in those 18 years had no bearing on making me less of a person. It made me actually a comedian. I write comedy. I'm a comedy filmmaker. In fact, my first movie is coming out. It's a short in a month. And it's hilarious and what's, very what's, wacky. What's, what's it called, the, the movie? Such a deal. It's kind of like a, a New York uh, a phrase. Oh, you know, you get a good deal on something and you might say, such a deal. Um, and I'm not going to go into what it's about, but it, uh, and I'll, I'll send you the link when it, when it goes uh, uh, live. But it's hilarious. And so the 18 years of dysfunction, all that time, it made me see things in a funny, twisted way. I could look at something very bad, even the pandemic, and I get wacky ideas to turn it into funny, not disrespectful to anything or anyone who has gone through bad things, whether the fires in the West Coast or losing a family member. Of course, we respect everyone, but I just see the world as a... A funny place mm -hmm. and that is the benefit of what occurred in my childhood that's what i took away when i travel i always talk to strangers that's how i find out about the cool wine bar about the alleyway where i might find a maker about um a church that's uh, uh in a little village that rarely tourists go always talk to strangers. I meet friends all over the world. In fact, when I have my birthday, which is in November, I get birthday wishes from people in Japan, in China, in Turkey, the Caribbean, all over. I love making friends. I, it's awesome because my sort of upbringing as well, um, I was quite an introverted person up until when I was around 16 to about 18. Um, but actually, I'm probably now the most, you know, gregarious person you could ever meet you know I love talking to people myself um, so it shows you that you don't necessarily have to have had this maybe the social life growing up or the social aspect you know growing up as kids you know uh, and you can develop into someone that um, that people can look up and go oh hang on a second I'd want to be more like you know Janine you know she, she's fantastic look, <laughs> look, how, look how going she is well but I think Psychologists, you know, I've studied a lot of psychology. Um, people are a result of genetics combined with environment. My personality from a very early age was very much questioning. Something happened in the house. Wait a second, why is that going on? That's not right. That was always me. That was not my brother. He would not question. He would say, oh, yeah, we deserve that because we're bad kids. No, I don't think so. And so there are some people who have a great childhood and they go on to do great things. There are some people who have a great childhood and they go on to not do great things. And I had the lousy childhood and I knew, you know, I'm going to go to Barnard. I'm lucky to get in because it's a very elite school. and I am going to make the most of every day. 
So I'm extremely productive. I'm a workaholic, whether it's the pandemic or not the pandemic. I mean, I have six different projects I'm working on, other films, the children's book, a new design for a bag, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm always moving forward. If I, 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 to ask you now, how would you describe your, yourself as a, if someone said, would you describe yourself as an entrepreneur? Would you uh, travel? Yeah, an entrepreneur. Is that what you? No, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm an entrepreneur, but you know, if I go to a networking meeting, you can't very well say, hi, I'm Janine. Someone says, what do you do? Oh, I'm an entrepreneur. It's way too generic. Yeah. Can mean anything. Did I open up a wine bar? Well, that would be nice, but no, I did not. So I generally say, depending on the subject of the particular networking meeting, I'll say I'm a travel writer and photographer and comedy screenwriter. And if they want to know more, then I'll go on. But, um, you know, it, it all depends who I'm speaking with. With all the, uh, the subject matter you know, you know, you said you're into fashion, travel, you name it. Are you constantly busy uh, with demands? I work seven days a week. I have always worked seven days a week. I love what I do. My life is one big creative bowl. And I know that must sound like, well, don't you like to rest? I don't know what rest means. You sit and do nothing. That's not a happy place. I don't like sitting around doing nothing. I like bringing something to life, whether it's a character in one of my scripts, whether it's something in a new children's book, whether it's um, a query I'm sending to an editor, a travel editor, um, or a new design I have for another fashion accessory. I love making things. And um, so I'm always working. And luckily I can, I can be that person because I'm not married and I don't have children. Did not want children. It would take too much time away from what I love. I love what I do. You've had some major publications with all the biggest yes. uh, companies mm -hmm. going. What makes you stand out with your work? What is it about your writing that appeals to these big companies? Well, what's interesting is it's more, remember I said the scientist in me is the curious person, okay? Curiosity is very important for a travel journalist. You need to question everything, not just to find the place, but to describe the place. And I am what I call the land of a thousand questions. I stand out as a journalist by how I'm able to track down places and experiences that people may have overlooked um, or just didn't care about. For example, I specialize in two countries, Iceland and Portugal. I go there all the time. I've been going to Iceland before Iceland was ever popular, uh, way before the 2008 crash over there. Would go to a cemetery. I'm not a macabre person, but I found out by scoping around the town that the cemetery is like a botanical garden. Visitors not, are not going to the cemetery, I can assure you. Maybe they are after I wrote my article, but they were not when I first wrote about it. And when I went in there, Oh my God, it's historical. You can see uh, tombstones from the 1600s. Beautiful trees, bird watchers, love the place. That's something that I am a standout uh, for, being able to find um, a venue in a very popular city that no one cared about. I, I got from that that um, you were probably one of the first, very first journalists to sort of, well, writers to go to these less places traveled really and seen things and people probably take from your writing and your work now and then visit those places now more than ever because it was probably to do with your writing and can I ask you how, how long have you been a journalist for? Oh decades I've been a, a journalist for a long time. So I, I guess from as, as you said you probably pioneered probably solo traveling, um, exploring the road less traveled, 
landmarks that people won't see. Uh, would that be a, a statement that I can make? Um, it, in part. Um, I personally don't love solo travel, nor am I the person who will just, I know there are many, many travel writers and bloggers that will, including women, who will go off for weeks or months on their own to a completely unexplored place with no itinerary. That's not me. That's not me. I know what my comfort zone is. Um, I have an anxiety factor. I don't like, and probably it's the scientist in me, I do not like uh, not having a plan. I like a plan. It's just the way I am. Now, that doesn't mean I follow the plan. I can go off of it, but I want to know where I'm sleeping at night. I don't want to say, yeah, I'm going to roam around, dark, kind of figure it out. Nope, 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 that's not me. Um, I sometimes travel uh, with a partner, uh, with my best girlfriend, uh, with a couple of girlfriends or guy friends. I, can, I sign up for group travel um, or I go alone. But it really very much depends on where I'm going in the world. There are certain places, for example, I'm not going to travel in the Peruvian Amazon alone. Now, does that mean you can't do that alone? No, you can do it alone. I don't feel comfortable. So I signed up uh, with a group tour in order to do that. Other places like Iceland, I go alone all the time and I hike alone. Uh, same for Portugal. But sometimes in Portugal, I'm doing a bike trip where I don't know the territory. So I hire a guide who's Portuguese. I speak Spanish. I don't speak Portuguese. And though the Portuguese understand Spanish, I do not understand Portuguese. So there are reasons for how I travel in certain ways. One of the things I've just picked up on there was um, the certain places, um, if there's a risk to it, uh, don't be silly. I, I always say, you know, there's no need to take that risk when you don't have to. Uh, always hire like a, a local, uh, someone that knows. So when I went to um, a favela in, in Brazil myself, um, I knew if I went alone, potentially I could have got mugged. You know, so I found mm -hmm. a local mm -hmm. guy and said, right, okay, can you take me around this favela? And you know, when I walked around, uh, he told me at the time, oh, those are part. Those guys are actually in. The, one of the gangs and like oh wow and they just walked past mm -hmm. us and he was like but they won't do anything because they know me and you know my my mm -hmm. family's been in this favela for hundreds of years or whatever um so mm -hmm. it's making sure you're smart when it comes to traveling especially if you're solo traveling or if you go in with with a group even if you go with a group you, you got to make sure what you do is smart really so you don't fall into a, a trap and then something bad happens i always say no, you're absolutely right. And it's especially important uh, as a woman alone because you could be a, tar a target. And I always dress, I mean, because I have a clothing line. So uh, the idea is to dress very simply and don't wear a bag that is, you know, has some designer name on it. Uh, you do not want to stand out as a foreigner. Um, so I don't wear revealing clothing, depending, I rarely wear revealing clothing actually anywhere in the world. Um, and I, I just have a sense of my surroundings. For example, I like to go out at night to a wine bar. I'm very big on wine, I write about wine. Um, and I also go out to dinner alone all the time, all over the world by myself. But I'm very, I'm looking around. I don't sit at a bar alone leaving my drink by, by itself and go to the bathroom. I know people who do that. I don't think so. So I'm very aware of my surroundings. With all your work, what would you say has satisfied you the most over the years? Is, is, could you pick anything? Well, it's kind of hard though, because it's almost like asking a parent who has a lot of children, which of your children gave you the most pleasure? And I'm sure they gave that parent, each one of them, pleasure in a different way. Like, for example, um, yes, you, you've mentioned I write for top-notch publications, but I write for all sorts of publications. And unlike some writers I know who maybe do their best work for the top publications, I do my best work for 
everyone, even those that don't pay as well, because my work is me. And I am grateful for all my work. And it is my calling card. You know, even if it's the smallest publication around that, again, like a destination, no one cares about. I care about it. People who subscribe to it, they care about it. And so therefore, I want that article of mine to be stellar. So everything I do is my best. I am pleased about all my articles. I'm pleased about my movie. I'm pleased about my line of clothing and accessories. I mean, all these things, all of these creative endeavors give me pleasure. So it would be difficult, if not impossible, to single some aspect and say, that made me the happiest. Because it's almost like saying, the others, eh, not so much. It's just not me. Fantastic to hear. And I think that's the drive. As you said, you work seven days a week. So to keep going every single day, <laughs> it's a, you've yeah. got to have some sort of fire in, in your belly, really, to uh, So everything that you do, you do it with a passion. And um, I always say that about any sort of jobs you take, anything that you do, any specific travels that um, sort of, well, when you looked at it and thought, oh, wow, that was a, a defining moment in my sort of life. Is there anything like that that you can pick? I like when I've spent more than a month at a destination when i have that opportunity i've done that many times i'd like to do it again mm -hmm. and post pandemic i am already right now planning my trips for the latter part of 2021 and that includes going for a month or at least three weeks maybe four uh to serbia to macedonia to albania to bulgaria uh, I'd like to spend three weeks doing that. So I find that when I spend a long period of time um, on the road, you really feel enmeshed in that area. Um, I'm also a long distance uh, bicyclist and um, Nordic skier and hiker. So when I have the opportunity to do that, like I bike the entire West Coast of the United States from Seattle to San Diego, oh, wow. um, the, yeah, it's, it's right along the coast. Um, I, love, I love that because you feel, it's almost like inertia. After the first week somewhere, it feels like you could do it forever. So that's what I love. Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned a few of your hobbies there. So any other hobbies that you've got that you sort of have a passion in? A lot of people have one job and hobbies. I have many occupations and professions the other things are ancillary, like I like crossword puzzles, um, I like biking, I like tennis, but biking is part of my travel writing, and I like wine, but I write about wine. So everything gets pulled into my life of, of work, yeah, not I, the crossword puzzles. But <laughs> yeah, do you know, what, actually, sometimes with all your hobbies, uh, they do, as you said, they do come into your, whenever you're doing your work or whenever you're traveling, because... Uh, let's just say if I'm traveling for specifically something, I might find something that I'm interested in. Oh, I, I want to do this because I've got a passion in it or I've got, now I do it for a hobby. Um, so it, it, they marry up with one another sometimes. I think that's a, that's something that a lot of people look at it and go, oh, why do you travel? Oh, sometimes I do it for, for this, you see. So I've got a passion in mm -hmm. music. And, um, so, yeah, I, I can understand, you know, you sort of combine everything together and, you know, if biking is something that you love or wine, as you said, you love your wine, you know, it all sort of, it comes together, doesn't it really? Well, it's also, I'm a painter and I do collage. Originally, I've always been um, a photographer, but the painting started off as a hobby. I took classes. I really liked it. It was really sweet, uh, very relaxing. Same with collage, but I now sell my work and I'm looking to exhibit my work. And if you see, follow me on Instagram, you'll see my work. It's all based on my travels though, and my love of nature. So I don't really do people photography or people, I definitely don't do people painting. It's just not my thing. Uh, my collages are more abstract, but it all derives from my love of nature. How would you describe yourself to someone in one word? Persistent. 
my persistence has gotten me where I am now. Because uh, what we didn't discuss is I had no background in anything that I do. I was not, I did not go to journalism school at Columbia. I was trained as a scientist, yet I'm a journalist, very hardworking journalist and a good journalist. Um, I was not trained as a photographer, but I'm a really good photographer. I have the eye for that image, very hard hitting images that really encapture the, uh, the whole area. I was not, I did not go to film school. And everyone said to me, you will never be able to sell your scripts sold my scripts and more forthcoming. And I definitely didn't know anything about making a pattern. I can't make a pattern at all, but I have a line of clothing and accessories. So I don't listen to what people say. I move at my own uh, pace and I'm persistent and it pays off. It sounds incredible because uh, I could quickly, quickly tell you one thing. I just recently done my website, I had no idea I'm not a website mm -hmm. designer. I asked, I called up a company and they said, we'll charge you two and a half thousand dollars. I thought, you know what? Two and a half thousand dollars is a lot of money. Let's see if I can do it mm -hmm. myself. Bang, I've, I've done it myself. So uh, persistent is absolutely correct. You know, if, if, you, if you know, if you believe in yourself as well, I think, because um, there's going to be always negative sort of people around you saying you can't do this. You need someone else to do it. If you, if you believe in yourself as well, I, I think you can go far. No, I, I completely agree with you. And this also derives from my first 18 years because it's my ability to believe that there was a better life, that I can be this person that thrives and is creative. That's what got me through and it made me what I am today. So I'm actually grateful for the life I had. It made me funny and it made me persistent. Wonderful. Listen, Janine, thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Um, and where can people find you? Uh, www.jthetravelauthority.com. Just the letter J, thetravelauthority.com. Awesome. Well, thank you again, and uh, take care of yourself. It was a pleasure. Take care. Great, great yeah. chatting. There you go, everyone. That was the wonderful Janine. Hopefully, you got a bit of inspiration from her. She is, as she said, a persistent individual. She's achieved a lot in her life, and perhaps if we had that sort of hunger that is what you require sometimes to succeed in life and remember to check out janine's website which is jthetravelauthority.com that's it for take a wonder with chefs hopefully you all enjoyed the show until next time bye for now